Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a recent study has shown that aging as a process isn't long and slow and a steady pace. It appears as though in our life there are three specific changes in gear with regard to the speed at which we age. Well enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's look at these three stages of aging. This is a review of an article I read in Science Alert, which was written by Daniel Neild. In it, he says that in terms of biological aging, our bodies seem to shift gears three times during our lifespan. 2019 research suggests that these major alterations take place around 34, 60 and 78 years of age. In other words, there's evidence that aging isn't one long continuous process that moves at the same speed throughout our lives. And there's links in the description below to the articles and study I used to put this presentation together. The findings might help us understand more about how our bodies start to break down as we get older and how specific age related diseases, including Alzheimer's or cardiovascular disease, could be better tackled. The same study has also put forward a new way of reliably predicting age using the protein levels, the proteum, in our blood. The team analysed data from the blood plasma of 4,263 people aged from 18 to 95, looking at the different levels of around 3,000 proteins moving through our biological system. These acted as a snapshot of what's going on in the body. 1,379 of the proteins were found to vary with age. The researchers wrote, by deep mining the aging plasma proteum, we identified undulating changes during human lifespan. These changes were the result of clusters of proteins moving in distinct patterns, culminating in the emergence of three waves of aging. While these protein levels often stay relatively constant, the researchers found that sizable shifts occurred in the readings of multiple proteins around young adulthood, which is 34 years of age, late middle age, which is 60, and old age, which is around 78. Why and how this is happening isn't clear yet, but if the proteins can be tracked back to their sources, it could enable a doctor to, for example, warn you that your liver is aging faster than the average person's. This study also emphasizes the link between aging and our blood, something that has been highlighted in previous studies. Neurologist Tony Wiskare of the Stanford Alzheimer's Disease Research Center said, we've known for a long time that measuring certain proteins in the blood can give you information about a person's health status, lipoproteins for cardiovascular health, for example. But it hasn't been appreciated that so many different protein levels, roughly a third of all the ones we looked at, change markedly with advancing age. The researchers were able to set up a system whereby the mix of 373 selected proteins in the blood could be used to accurately predict someone's age within around three years or so. Interestingly, when the system failed by predicting an age that was too young, it transpired that these subjects were usually very healthy for their age. Another finding from the study gives more evidence to something that's long been suspected. Men and women age differently. Women tend to live longer. Of the 1,379 proteins that were found to change with age, 895, nearly two thirds, were significantly more predictive for one sex compared with the other. Now these are all still early findings and the researchers say any clinical applications could still be five to 10 years away. So no later than 2029. And it's gonna take a lot more work to figure out how all of these proteins are markers for aging and whether or not they do all actually contribute to it. So what are the future? 
Although the results are possibly 10 years away, it raises a possibility of one day getting a far more accurate blood test that can measure just how well we are aging, at least at the cellular level. These tests are available now, but in some cases have a 10 year margin of error. The more we know about getting older, the more we can do to counteract it. Everything from knowing what to drink and what to eat to potentially add years to our lifespan. Just as importantly, helping to stave off some of the worst age-related afflictions and add years to our health span. Professor Tony Whiskeray closed by saying, and I do echo his statements, ideally, you'd want to know how virtually anything you took or did affects your physiological age. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. It looks as though if you look at the dates, the results of these clinical trials could now only be eight years away. And I'm hoping, and I hope you agree, that when this data starts to get collected, it can be used to inform people about their lifestyle and their lifestyle choices that could have an effect on their lifespan and their health span. For example, if you smoke X amount of cigarettes per day for so many years, it will have this effect on your lifespan and this effect on your health span. Also, if you drink X amount of alcoholic drinks per day for so many years, these are the effects that will have on your health span and lifespan. And in the same way, if you do positive things, such as you eat this kind of diet for these amount of years, it will have this effect on your lifespan and health span. And if you exercise for X amount of minutes per day, so many times per week, this is the effect it will have on your health span and lifespan. So that's it for today. Let me know what you thought of the presentation. Um, as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.